Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Virginia SBDC's 10th Google to Great webinar, Google Presentations. This webinar, as those that have preceded it, is designed to give you an overview of how to actually use this powerful tool and some practical tips from a business small business perspective. If you missed any of the other webinars, you can find a recorded version on the Virginia SBDC's website under online training. That's virginiasbdc.org, and then click on online training. All of our Google to Great webinars are presented by Ray Sidney Smith, a self-proclaimed Googleologist and president of W3 Consulting, a digital business strategy firm that provides training on how to use various web-based technologies to small businesses. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type those questions in the question wi window and Ray will do his best to answer them. Without further ado, here's Ray Sidney Smith. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you to the Virginia SBDC Network for having me on for the Google to Great Presenting Well on the Web, and this is about the product Google Presentations. Today, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and use the webinar panel. As Tracy talked about, if you have follows, mentions, or questions on Twitter, go ahead and send those at W3 Consulting. You can go ahead and hashtag Google to Great. And so to get right into the presentation, what we're going to be doing is just talking about several different things today. We're going to follow uh, straight through in progression. We're going to talk a little bit about Google Presentations, this background in history, just very briefly. Then we're going to talk about why and when to use presentations, the tool itself. We'll talk about the toolbar within Google Docs, or now Google Drive, and what you can do within that particular uh, toolbar. We'll build an actual presentation. I'll take you through the process of building a presentation, and the presentation will be called How to Give a Good Presentation in Presentations. And then we'll talk about collaborating with Google Presentations. We'll go ahead and publish the live Google presentation to the web, and I'll show you around the live presentation tool. And then we'll do question and answers. So with that, let's uh, jump right into the Google presentation view. Uh, and well, I'll just go jump to the first slide, and, and then we'll, we'll talk about uh, Google presentation's background. Uh, that is that uh, Google Presentations was developed in uh, between 2005 and 2007, and it actually became a, a public tool in about September 2007. Google opened it up to the world. They released the presentation product within Google Docs. It is now part of what is called Google Drive. Google Drive itself is the larger brand that now holds a couple of different products, and you get those products as a part of, of the suite whenever you go to Drive. .google.com. So let's drive, as in driving a car, drive.google.com. When you go there, you sign in using your Google account, and now you have access to five different products. Google Documents, Google Presentations, which we'll be talking about today. You'll have access to spreadsheets, form, and drawing. Those products in and of themselves sort of uh, represent a complement uh, or a replacement to Microsoft Office. So if you think about Microsoft Office, Word, PowerPoint, Publisher and some other products, those Excel and those other products, it's sort of a complement to that. So let's uh, jump out of the presentation. I'm going to take us over to the, uh, the home page to the Google Drive page. So now we're in Google Drive, and you can see here that I have a list of my documents, and I can go ahead and create a new Google presentation from the Google Drive home page or home screen. So while my computer catches up with me. Here we go. So you can see there's a Create button here. When I click on the Create button in the top left-hand corner, it drops down and it gives me a couple of options to create not only those five different types of files, but also collection and more. We've talked about this in prior webinars. So if you just go back to some of the archive uh, options, uh, there's the, I think we talked about this in uh, Google Documents, the Google Documents webinar. You can go in and, and see how to sort of get around this home screen. We're just going to click on Presentation here. And it will then open up a new tab or a new window based on your browser's settings. And it will take us into the Google presentation uh, start screen. It will choose a theme and so on and so forth. And I'm just going to click OK so we can come to the, to the final screen. So why use, at this point, Google presentations versus any other product? There, there are several other products out there on the market. And of course, there's the mainstay, Microsoft pre, uh, you know, PowerPoint, which really was a, a boon for Microsoft Corporation, but really to the small business owner and as well as the business industry in general. It allowed us to be able to create presentations in a new way that we never thought possible. Now, of course, that's created a whole industry of bad presentations. <laughs> so now we experience PowerPoint 
you know, uh, in, in, in a different way. We, we see PowerPoint in a different way as not only an audience, but also as business people. Everyone presumes that you need to have a presentation slide deck when you are presenting. There's offline and online presentation, and Google presentations really excels when you're doing online presentations and does an okay job when you're doing live in-person presentations. Now, I use Google presentations for all of my presentations that are done live, except for a couple based on their context and how I want to put together the, the slide deck. So if I don't have a lot of moving parts, that is, I don't have a lot of visual changes that I want to manifest, uh, visual imagery or those types of things, I will defer to Google presentations for those reasons. Now, on the website, I will always use Google presentations over a PowerPoint or another tool because I'm capable of going ahead and loading that live on the web and sharing and collaborating with my staff or client organization that I'm preparing a presentation for and to be able to do that collaboration right there in the cloud. So that's why and when Google presentations really works well is when you're doing a live presentation on the web and you want to show information, graphs, and text-based and uh, you know, visual imagery that's not necessarily moving, video and so forth uh, is sometimes a, a problem because the recipient, the people who are on the other side of the video, don't necessarily see the video as, as clean and clear sometimes through a webinar uh, interface like the one we're using this morning. So that being the case, let's go ahead and review the toolbar and then I'll get into actually building a presentation within Google Presentations. So right from the start, you have this untitled presentation. Note, note that when, when it did load, it, it gives you the opportunity to choose a theme, and I'll, I'll go through that in, in a couple minutes when we get to the slide. But if we're at the main screen here, once we click and choose a, a default theme for the presentation, we have untitled presentation here in the top left-hand corner for us to go ahead and choose a title. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a title, and this one is going to be Google to Great, How to Give a great presentation using Google Presentations. And now you can see that the title of the presentation is now there, and that's what's saved as the title of the presentation within Google Drive, so that you, if you wanted to go back and find it later, you could go ahead and do that. You have File, which allows you to be able to share, and that Share button is also here in the top left-hand corner. And you can see who has access to that particular file for sharing purposes. You can see this is private to only me, that means I only have access to this particular presentation right now. And if I just click on that button, I can go ahead and change that. Again, we've covered this in prior webinars, so if you just go back to a prior webinar, I believe Google Documents we covered pretty uh, helpfully, you can go ahead back to that and uh, learn about the sharing settings. Uh, going down, you can go, go ahead and click on New under File, and that will give you the opportunity to go ahead and create new documents within the new files different file types, spreadsheet, presentation, document, form, and drawing uh, from there. But the most important part is this from template. You can actually find templates of presentations that are already done. So you already have a presentation template that you have published within the Google Drive or Google Docs template gallery, or if you've found one within the Google Drive template gallery, you can go ahead and import that and then use that as a base set of templates in order to use uh, in, in order to create create from. Typically what's going to happen is that you're going to create a base set of slides. You know, I have a, a, a title slide, and I have a main slide, and a final slide. And those have my logo on it. They represent the right fonts that I'm supposed to be using. They may have some other visual imagery that I have on my final slide in, in general. And those I will just literally make a copy from a, an existing Google Drive uh, presentations file that's already in, in existence. So what that means is that I would actually be back in Google Drive here at the home page or the home screen, and I would actually go into this particular presentation. So say I go into the presentation from this morning, and I would, if, if it loads, let's see. Yeah, I'll go ahead and click on File, and then go ahead and click on Make a Copy. Now what Make a Copy is going to do is it's going to jump over, and it's going to go ahead and give me the ability to I'll copy my document collaborators, the ones who have access to my document already or not, and then I can click OK. And now what it does is it uses that base presentation that I've already created 
and gives me a new slide that's now called copy of. And now I have the ability to just go from that template and start from there. So it's a really easy way to create one template and, uh, and then not have to go ahead and recreate the wheel every time you are creating any presentation. So I'm going to close this out and go back here. All right, so here, uh, again, we have the ability to make a copy. We can rename the document at any time. And you can also import the other way that you can create presentations from templates is that you can import a PowerPoint presentation that you have sitting on your desktop or on a, on a server drive that you have access to in your office. So if you've already created a presentation and you want to go ahead and have access to that within Google Presentations, you can do that. Again, you have the ability to, to collaborate with folks uh, live in the cloud, and we'll get to that uh, near the end of the presentation, so that you can go ahead and, and actually use the collaboration tools, commenting and live editing together with folks within the Google uh, Presentations tool. So make sure that you, you are aware of, of being able to upload PowerPoint presentations into the system. Uh, sometimes there'll be uh, some conversion uh, you know, features that will be taken out because the conversion doesn't allow for uh, some types of, of, of animation like audio and whatnot. But for the most part, you'll get the, the presentation base that you have created, and you can use that in the system. So you can go ahead and import slides from another presentation. So many times, I will be putting together a presentation, and I'll have done many other presentations that might be similar or, or, or have slides that relate to the new topic that I'm, I'm going to be speaking on. And so therefore, I can go ahead in there and choose from my existing presentation. In this presentation, I could go ahead and select it. And now I can go ahead and pick, pick uh, specific slides from that presentation and import them into my current presentation. As well, you can see there's an option for me to keep the original theme. What, me, what that means is there is the ability for you to go ahead and have transitions. At the, at the highest level, you have themes. Then you have layouts. And layouts are the specific layout of the actual slide, You know where data actually sits within the slide. And then finally, you have these, uh, you have the transitions within the slide, basically how information shows up as you use uh, the space bar or the arrow key or your presentation remote as you're moving through the, the presentation. Either way, the theme is the overarching view, the, the typeface, the background fonts, and the background colors and images and so on and so forth. And so you can choose to keep the background original theme or not from, from that import. I'm not actually going to do the import, but you can see that you can import them from places. So you can change the language. In this case, you, can, you have all the options of, of Google that Google currently has in terms of its language database. So uh, whether it's uh, whatever your comfortable language is with you and your audience, you can go ahead and uh, choose a, a language. You can, of course, download these, uh, these presentations into these formats. So Microsoft PowerPoint, a PDF, a scalable vector graphic, or SVG, PNG, which is the lossless image format, the Microsoft uh, Windows lossless image format, which also works on the web, uh, JPEG, which is the standard visual image format, is the standard image format, and then plain text. You can go ahead and download the plain text file of it. You can publish this to the web, and I'm going to show you that later. You can email collaborators, and you can actually email the document as any of these, not any of these, uh, as a PowerPoint, as a PDF, and uh, you can go ahead and email as an attachment those, this particular presentation to whomever you'd like. You have print settings and preview so that you can go ahead and change the way this document will print if you were to print it on a real printer. And of course, you have a printing option. So that's under File. Edit are the, all the same functions of undo, redo, cut, copy, paste. You have delete and you have the ability to duplicate a slide so that if I click on this title slide, I can go ahead and uh, use the function of edit, duplicate, and it will go ahead and, and duplicate the slide that I currently have on. And we're going to use that in a little while as well. You can select all slides. You can select none. And you can also select all of the uh, content on a page by clicking within a specific slide and going ahead and selecting all. You can refine and replace. So you can fi find and replace specific words, names of organizations, that type of thing. Under view, you have the ability to change all of the view settings. I'm not going to go over all of them, but the most important one is the start presentation, 
which again is also a button up here in the top right hand corner of the Google Presentations tool. So you can go ahead and start presentation. You have the option of looking at animations, which I'm not going to talk about today. I don't, I don't think you should really use them yet in Google Presentations. And then going over to insert, you have the ability to insert many different types of content for your presentation. So you can import, of course, text and uh, insert text. You can go ahead and put it whatever text you would like. You could, of course, import images, both from your desktop, from your Google Photo albums, and from the uh, database of Google. So Google Images, you can go out there and search for images that are available out there on the web and or a specific website that might have an image that you are going to use within Google Presentations. Withstanding, you have authority from the copyright owner to be able to use that. Or if it's open under the Creative Commons license on the web, you can go ahead and use those images in your presentation. You can, of course, put in web links so that if during the presentation you needed to launch another web page in order to show data, it will go ahead and do that from your presentation. You can import videos, and I'm going to show you that in a little while as well. And you can put in word art. If everybody knows what word art is, is basically being able to change the font and, and uh, in different fun ways just to have uh, little text boxes stand out, little insets stand out. You can add lines, shapes, tables to the presentation. And you can, of course, when you are in any of these uh, areas, you can actually add live drawings through the Google Drawing app, which we'll be talking about in a future webinar. So you can go ahead and do simple shapes where you can do call-out windows and, and do uh, visual equations and those types of things, and graphs. And so you can do all of those things using other products like Google Presentations and spreadsheets. And so, so think, about, think about how you want to visually represent this and you can probably manifest it here in Google Presentations really well. Tables, of course, for being able to show uh, table-based data. And you can, of course, see the commenting tool. And I'll talk about that again when we get to collaboration. Under Slide, you can create new slides, duplicate a slide, delete slide, a lot of replication of things. Also, if you click on any particular slide in this field, you can drag and drop them. So you know, whereas under Slide, you can, you can do the new slide, the duplicate and delete. Here you can actually go ahead and move them from one place to another, take three slides, move them up ahead of another slide or, or all of the slides. And you can also just go ahead and click on one and delete uh, the slide from that view from, from this little side panel. Okay, So you can do that. You can change the background. As we talked about before, the theme uh, controls the background. And, and the font and so on and so forth, the title font, the subtitle font, and the body paragraph font. So you can go ahead and, and change the theme. Google gives you a great number of options for being able to just start with a particular theme. And you can go ahead and just click on it. And you can see that it will just automatically start creating the theme settings for the title slide and future slides. So if I wanted to create a new slide, you can see that it gives me the, the standard main slide theme for that particular slide, which is different than the title theme. And I could just go ahead and start entering data. And it gives me all the background visuals, the font types. Everything's all sort of set in place, even to the effect that you can see this particular slide angles the text at a slight, what seems to be 10, 10 or 15 degree uh, you know, curve, I'm not, angle, I'm sorry. And so you have the uh, you have the ability to go ahead and just go right into the tool, and it does all of those things for you. I'm going to change this theme back to something a little bit more suitable here. And so we'll go through and see see what what's in here. And there's there's all sorts of options, and then from there you can actually customize that theme. So if you even if you come to a theme and you like. 90% of it, and you just want to change a little bit of it to, to make it custom for you, you can go ahead and do that, and then uh, save that, that thing for yourself. So the layout, uh, as I said, Google gives you six different types of layouts. So you go from the theme, which is the, the font types, then down to the typefaces and the background images, and how the data is laid out for a main slide, and then supporting slides. And then you have the layout of each of those slides, and you can change them every time you create a new slide. So you can just have a title slide, and that's going to be the first slide that you have. If you have a title and a body slide, that's the title of the, of the presentation. And then below that's going to be some body text, okay? just paragraph-based body text. Then you can go down to title and two columns, basically having 
title and then two columns, pretty simple. Title only if you get to a point in the presentation where you want to create part one, part two, and part three, you can go ahead and just show the, those parts by using a title only slide. Then you can do captions where basically you have a, if you want to put a picture or a video or something like that, you can go ahead and create a caption. Then of course, there's a blank slide and those are for when you have a pause in between content. Remember, when you are presenting live, you are, you are the presenter. People are paying attention to you, and presentations, slide decks, are supporting your presentation. They are not your presentation, and I think a lot of people get that mistaken when, when they are doing a presentation. They presume that the presentation is, the, the presentation slide deck is the presentation, and really, in actuality, you are the presentation. The content is the presentation. So, here we go with uh, the blank slide. We can use the blank slide. So we can uh, change transitions. And again, I'm going to skip that as well. So animations and transitions are available in Google Presentations. I'm going to skip those today because those are more advanced than we have time to cover. But for the most part, we are going to overcome the lack of using the transitions through static slides. And I'm going to show you how I do that. It just cuts down on the number of errors that might happen in transitions and computers giving giving up on, on particular animation tools. So uh, then if we go down here, if we had multiple slides already, we only have one slide, so these are grayed out. But basically, the grayed out options are moving slides up, down, to the beginning, and to the end. We also have the ability to move between slides just for viewing purposes. We can go ahead and click on page up and page down and home and end to go ahead and see the first last slide as well as going from the previous to the next slide. And so that's the slide options. Under format, you have all the regular formatting that you would have in any normal editor, so bold, italics, underline, and so on and so forth. Okay, you can make lists and numbers, you can center text, you can do all of those fun things. Arranging is really where you are actually capable of arranging the specific item here. So, not to get ahead of myself, but let's go ahead and give this, give, uh, this title to the presentation. And I'm just going to shorten it to how to give a great presentation. Now I have an object. So this object is selected because the blue bar is surrounding it. And so I have the blue bar surrounding it. I'm going to go click on Arrange. And now Arrange gives me a couple of options. I'm capable of bringing it to the front, bringing it uh, forward, sending it backward, and sending it to the back. What that means is that if I want to bring an object for, to the front, that means it will be on the topmost layer of that particular item. If you want to think about this as how to give a great presentation being printed on a transparency, remember those print transparencies way back when, and you had a, a transparency projector, you could layer multiple transparencies on top of one another and therefore sort of create an animation of sorts. Well, that's pre pretty much how this is designed. Bringing it to the front is like taking that transparency that has how to give a presentation on it and putting that on the very top of everything else that is sitting on the power on the presentation on the transparency projector. So we can go ahead and bring it to the front. We can bring something forward, which means we're going to bring it one layer forward from where it was. So if there were three transparencies on there and it was sitting as number three, the bottom one, most one, we can bring it up to the second layer as a transparency. Next, we can send it backward, which means we can reverse what I just said. And then finally, we can send it to the back, which means that if something were sitting in front of another piece of text, say you had a call-out box. And I can go ahead and show you what that, what that means. Uh, if we go, go ahead and take a call-out box, I'm just going to throw one in here. And bam, we wanted, uh, we wanted a call-out box here. And uh, just to add a little bit of sparkle, well, you can see that now it is blocking how to give a great presentation. Well, if we go to Arrange, Order, and then with How to Give a Great Presentation selected, I can bring it forward. And you can see now that how to give a great presentation is now readable in front of that callout box. The callout box is now behind the how to give a great presentation. So now I don't have to worry about people not being able to read the words that I have. So there you go. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, delete particular parts that we don't that we don't want. So in this case, I don't want the subtitle, so I'm just going to remove the subtitle altogether. Uh, under again under arrange, you can see we can center things on pages. We can align uh, particular objects like images and video 
horizontally and vertically on the page. We can center things horizontally or vertically on the page, and we can align objects with one another, relative to one another. So if we wanted to select both of these things just by highlighting them, we could go ahead and ask this to go ahead and align them left or right, which means this would push all of these to the right side of the slide deck. We can center them on the slide deck. We can arrange them vertically, basically pushing them both to the center of the page like that. You can see now they're both centered with one another. And we could do all sorts of things in terms of arranging them using those those tools. We can group particular items. So if I take this and, again, highlight both items, you can see both items are, are outlined now in blue. If I go ahead and click on, oh, I can't do those with, uh, with different kinds of, uh, different kinds of, of, of content. You can only do them with light content. So if I had multiple call-out boxes, I could go ahead and group those items together and then move them together. So if I wanted to move them from slide to slide or apply specific types of items. I could rotate things within the image. So if I wanted to turn that call-out box 90 degrees or otherwise, I can go ahead and do that. And I can also uh, ungroup or regroup particular items that, that were not. So if I had multiple images and I wanted to move those images in particular ways or expand them or you know scale them larger or scale them smaller, I can go ahead and do that using the grouping tool. So that is range. Table, of course, once you've created a table within Google Presentations, you can then go ahead and manipulate the cells and columns and rows within that. Table. So you can insert rows, take rows out, insert columns, take columns out, move them left and right, and so on and so forth. There is a healthy help section within Google Presentations, and that's available within the Help Center, the User Forum, and then the Docs community on Google+, which is Google's social network. If you have uh, questions about Google Docs or Google Drive in any way, shape, or form, if you just go to one of these three sources or all three of those sources, starting at the Help Center, going to the User Forum, and then going to the Docs community, you will find an answer to your question. So that's, that's pretty much the, 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 the long and short of it. They really have a robust community for you to be able to get answers. If you have any questions about the keyboard shortcuts, that is, you don't want to go back and forth between keyboard and mouse as many times, as, uh, as, as few times as possible, you can go ahead and uh, click on that button. And on most, on most Windows computers, I believe, by clicking on the question mark, you will actually be taken to this screen. And as you can see, this is all of the keyboard shortcuts to move things around and to uh, execute functions within Google Presentations, and actually through a lot of the other products. You, so if you go to other Google products like Gmail, other, other Google Drive products like Google Documents, and so on and so forth, if you just click on that Help Keyboard Shortcuts function, you'll be able to go ahead and see these same tools that apply in that specific tool. So those can be very helpful. All right, so now we've gone and reviewed the toolbar itself. And now I'm going to take you through the process of building a presentation. Because why not show you how to give a great presentation using Google Presentations using Google Presentations? So here we are. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and outline my presentation. My presentation is going to have three different main body points. And we're going to cover a couple of things. In presentations, we know that we want to go ahead and Hold on a second, how to give a great presentation. And we have three main parts to this presentation. And so in general, we talk about presentations in threes and sevens. The human mind, when we talk about brain science or neuroscience, people pretty much remember things in threes and remember things in groups of seven. So it wouldn't, it's not out of, it's not odd that we have seven days in the week, and uh, that we have you know, uh, things come in lots of threes in our lives. The, the number three and seven is a really good tool for you to remember that if you're going to have groupings of things, they should be less than seven and definitely grouped in, uh, in they should be in groupings in general, but you can go ahead and group in three. So we're going to have three parts to this presentation. In this case, you can see that I, I started the number tool to create numbers. And I want to go ahead and create that numbered list. And so here we are, I'm creating the numbered list. And the first one is going to be, of course, uh, planning. Planning is, is really important in giving the great presentation. Two is, of course, knowing the 10, 20, 30 rule. And I'm going to go over what the 10, 20, 30 rule, the Guy Kawasaki rule from his Art of the Start book. And then we're going to talk about vocal delivery skills. 
which is primarily a tool that we talk about when we're giving great presentations using Google Presentations because it is on the web and many times you don't have an opportunity to have audio visual. As you don't today, you only have audio and so vocal delivery skills are really important when it comes to giving a great presentation. So here we are, we have the, the, the three parts of our presentation and now I'm going to start creating some of the parts of the presentation. Of course, we have the title slide, which you can see I've already created part of it. So how to give a great presentation. I might want to also add by using the little text box tool. We can go to insert text box, but I'm using the images on the toolbar here. And we're going to go ahead and create a text box that just gives my name because I'm the presenter. So there we go. I'm Mason Smith, and I'm with W3 Consulting. And so I want to go ahead and put that on my, my title slide. I might want to make that a little bit larger so people can actually read it. So I'll highlight the text and go ahead and change the font size to something that is uh, closer to a 20-point font. All right, so there we go. So I've created my title slide. And now the most important part is to create, well, not the most important part, but the next part is to go ahead and create my final slide. So I'm going to go ahead and move this slide to the very end. And this is going to uh, have, we'll move this up to the top. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to go to slide and show you how to change a layout. And we just want title and body. You see it's changed the layout. So now we jump to the title and body. And my final presentation slide is going to have just a couple of pieces of information. My name again, my company name, how to contact me and so on and so forth. So I can put other, other contact information in here. OK, so it's going to be my final slide. I might want to put a visual in here, maybe my company logo, and so on and so forth. So I've created my, uh, my, my title slide, which is the one that sort of shows before the presentation begins. I've created my final slide here within Google Presentations for you know, when the presentation gets to the end. And I might even want to use the same call-out button, a uh, call-out feature behind here. So I'm just going to go ahead and control copy. Uh, or command copy if you're on a Mac. I'm going to go over to my presentation here, and I'm just going to have uh, the same uh, paste function, so control V or command V. And I'm going to put this uh, back here. I'm going to shrink it a little bit because it needs to fit the, uh, the little corner here. And you can see that now it's overlapping, so I'm going to go into the Arrange tool and go to Arrange, Order, Bring to the front. And there you go. Now the presentation has the same callout feature from the main slide and it gives a view to the, the whole presentation. So if I wanted to use that call out little image as the cue for the presentation, the visual cue for the presentation beginning and ending, I could use that little, that little item. So that's what we're going to use. All right, so here we go. We have the planning, 10, 20, 30, and vocal delivery skills. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in reverse from this slide in terms of creating the parts of each of the presentation. So in planning, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this slide three times because I'm going to show this slide three times. And so I'm going to have to duplicate it three times. So we can go to edit uh, and then duplicate and then or, or, or over to slide and duplicate. So we're going to do the slide, duplicate. We're going to do that three times. And now I have the main slide. So if I were to start the presentation like I did this morning and said, oh, these are the seven things we're going to talk about today. I went over those seven things. And now we're going to get to our first thing. I go to that first thing, and I delete everything but the first thing. And perhaps here I would put an image right here of something showing planning and showing folks uh, what planning looks visually to cue them in that we're going to be talking about something of, of, uh, about planning. So next we'll go to the second part of the presentation, and here goes the 10, 20, 30 rule. And then finally, we'll have the final part slide that shows vocal delivery skills. All right. So here under planning, I'm now going to start creating my slide for the planning part of our how to give a great presentation presentation. So I'm going to create a new slide right after planning. And I'm going to go ahead and change the layout. I'm going to go ahead and go to slide change the layout, and I'm going to have a title and uh, just a body. So it already was, was there. So here, this is how to give a great presentation. And this is about planning. And 
under planning, I'm going to have three bullet points, and uh, those bullet points is planning your outline. You should have an outline for your presentation, and you should follow that outline, especially as you're creating your slide deck. It help, it's, it's, sort of a, it's a good check and balance for you to be able to go ahead and do that, and then uh, you can go ahead and work off of that outline as you're speaking. Of course, whenever you're doing your presentation in the planning process, you should know your audience, know who you're speaking with, and of course, prepare the presentation in line with that. And then, of course, planning process is uh, finding your outline and in confluence, knowing what your uh, resources are that you need. So you're going to go ahead and assemble your resources. And assembling your resources may be getting the visual imagery that you need for this particular presentation, getting the video that you need for the presentation, going ahead and getting the background quotes. Maybe you're doing a quote of a particular author or someone that is going to provide legitimacy to your presentation and so on and so forth. So you go ahead and assemble your resources. We jump down to the 10-20-30 rule. The 10-20-30 rule is such, I'm going to create the slide as I talk about it, but the 10-20-30 rule is basically what Guy Kawasaki says, is that a presentation should have 10 slides when you are giving a pitch to an investor. And the, the 10 slides should uh, encompass 20 minutes of talking, and it should be in 30-point font. Okay, so 10 minutes, 20, 20 minutes, uh, 10 slides, 20 minutes, 30 point font. So uh, we're going to go ahead and how to give a great presentation. And we generally like to adhere to most of the 10, 20, 30 rule. Okay, and so the three parts of the 10, 20, 30 rule are 10 slides, 20 minutes, and 30 point font. All right. So there we go. We have the 10, 20, 30 rule. Now again, what I'm, what I'm going to do is because I didn't do any transitions, I have a base slide here. And again, I'm going to duplicate that base slide so that I am going, going to go backwards in the presentation and delete back to the content that will show up as I'm moving my way through the slides. So you can see here, if I go planning, know your audience, and then assemble your resources. I started from the final slide, and I deleted backwards to what will show up in the first slide in that series. So you see that I had three different parts to my presentation. I have three different points in this particular part, and I've broken those parts down into three different slides to show the three points as they develop as I'm talking about them. Okay. So now we're going to get to the 10, 20, 30 rule. I give the 10, 20, 30 rule items. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And we're going to go ahead and talk about each of the particular parts. So 10 slides, 20 minutes, and 30 point font. Okay. So we can add visuals here at this point. I can show 10 slides right here as a visual. I can go ahead in here and show a clock that shows only 20 minutes on the clock, a little timer maybe. That would help people understand that. 30-point font, I would go ahead and show a, a size of 10, uh, a 5, 10, or uh, you know, 7.5, 15, and 30-point font so people could see the difference. That on screen here, 30-point font, which is what you're looking at right now in, in terms of the body text, is an appropriate size text for you to be able to read anything smaller than that, and it becomes a little bit difficult for your eyes to be able to read that up on a screen. So you can go ahead and show the text in 7.5, 15, and then 30 to really show people, hammer home the point, that 30-point font is really the ideal font to have up on screen. And finally, vocal delivery skills as being the, the final part to this presentation. I'm going to go ahead over to slide again, change layout, and I'm going to go to title and two columns because I'm going to have more content in here than can fit in just one column. I want to be able to go ahead and do that. So as I said before, we want to match things in, in numbers of seven. And so how to give a great presentation slide regarding vocal delivery skills is going to cover, in the bullet points, a couple of things. We're going to talk about uh, volume. Volume is important because if you can't hear the speaker, then you are pretty much at a loss, right? We uh, want to talk about tempo, the speed at which you are speaking, and the rhythm 
by which you're speaking. Are you speaking very staccato? Are you speaking very melodic and being very fluid with the way in which you're speaking? Those things, of course, create different types of delivery and are good for different types of content. I'm a staccato speaker, so I have to speak in a clear staccato and a clear rhythm so that the information that I'm giving, especially when it comes to technology, is absorbed. But then I have to jump in at particular times and get excited about things to jog your memory and so that I can point out to you that things are important. So of course, pitch is, a, is going to be a really important item within giving a presentation. We then talk about uh, the uh, word emphasis. Oops, I meant to do this in two columns. So let's go over here. We were talking about pitch. We were talking about word emphasis. And then below that, we're going to actually have another slide, text box, that talks about progression and dynamism. Uh, so here goes dynamism. And we're going to increase that to 30. And we're going to go ahead and center this text. And I actually want to go ahead into a range, go ahead and order, I'm sorry, center on page, and I want to center this in the middle of that slide. Okay. So here goes the, the final slide here. I missed something. Oh, I missed pauses. You want to go ahead and pause between particular types of content. So here you note that I have six bullet points, but I'm tricking the audience because I have this final seventh item, which is dynamism, because when we take these six parts of vocal delivery skill, we actually have vocal dynamism. This is the idea that when you have all of the parts in place, when you're giving the right presentation, you're using the right presentation vocal delivery skills for being able to, to give a great presentation, you have vocal delivery dynamism. Okay? So that's my seventh item. Remember, I want to go in threes and sevens. So here I have volume, tempo, rhythm, pitch, word emphasis, pauses. People are going to be naturally, unconsciously thinking for that seventh item and then I'm going to be able to bang, hit them with vocal dynamism. When you, when you take these six parts, you have vocal dynamism, and that will help drive home memory for those folks. So again, I'm going to do exactly what I did with the other slides. I'm going to go ahead and create seven duplicates of this particular slide. And, and uh, quickly and easily, you see that Google Presentations goes ahead and just uh, uh, creates all of those slides for me. And I'm going to go to the first one, and I'm going to delete everything but the first item. Now note that it goes ahead and, and goes to click here to add text. That won't show up in the presentation itself. So it will just, or you can just put a space in there if it, if it might. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't show up in the, in the live presentation. But we're just going to delete everything until we get to the point where we have just the content that we're covering on each slide as we're progressing. So here we go. We've gotten through the first three. Now we're into the fourth. And then the fifth, word emphasis. Then we get to our final, which is pauses. And all we need to do is just take out dynamism. And then finally, we have dynamism at the end. And it seems like I have done that correctly. All right, so now as we make our progression through, we, we get to part three, which is vocal delivery skills, and we have volume, tempo, rhythm, pitch. Oh, what happened here? Always good to check, right? Pitch, word emphasis. Oh, what did I do? So I have I'm talking about vocal delivery skills, and I don't need this. I'm talking about, let's see, sorry about that. So volume, tempo, rhythm. Then we go to pitch. So this slide is not necessary. Then we talk about word emphasis, pauses, and then vocal dynamism. And then our presentation uh, is over, except that we want to go back to the first slide, and we want to recap. So I'm going to copy and go ahead and I'll just, just duplicate. So here I just clicked on Control or Command D to duplicate, and I'm now going to drag this down to the very end. 
And right before I close up, I go ahead and finish off vocal delivery skills and then go to uh, recap what we discussed, which is planning 10, 20, 30, and vocal delivery skills, and then show my final slide. Okay, so in that short couple of minutes, I've gone ahead and created a slide. And so this is uh, the slide deck that I'm going to use to how to give a great presentation using Google Presentations and, uh, well, just how to give a great presentation. Let's, we can take out the using Google Presentations because we are. And uh, so let's go and change that. And now we have how to give a great presentation. Great. So at this point, I want to show you guys how to use the collaboration tools with Google Presentation and say, at this point, I've gotten my base presentation together. And again, I, I didn't use animations or transitions here just so that it's as simple as possible. You know, sometimes you will show up at a presentation location and uh, the graphics card on the particular laptop or another device that's being used doesn't work. And so your animation or your transitions might not work. So again, I, I, I recommend not really going that, that route unless you really know the equipment you're working on. Okay? So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and open up the comments function, which allows me to go ahead and add a comment to this particular presentation. If I were working with other people, say for instance, I went ahead and said, hey, Tracy, can you help me pre you know, prepare for this presentation? I could go ahead and to share and in invite Tracy to the presentation. And now she will get an invitation to be able to become a collaborator on uh, any, any level that I have allowed. I can ask, have her edit the document with me or just comment or view. In this case, I want her to go ahead and comment. And now I share and save. And she's going to, have, going to go ahead and receive an email from me that will allow her to go into the presentation with me and comment right along with the document live looking at it with me. So I could provide a comment and I could say, HHE. What does this look like to you? How does this look to you? You know, whatever the comment is. Now, when I click on comment, I have a couple of options. I can go ahead and respond to this comment, my own comment. I can add more comments to my comment in this discussion. And I can resolve the comment. So say, for instance, I see that Tracy responds back and she says, hey, Ray, this looks a little bit dull. This needs some visual imagery. This needs a little bit of cleanup in terms of font. The font is all sort of, you know, as I prepared, I just put in, I literally just put in my outline. I didn't actually put in uh, type font, type, and change typefaces. I really didn't use a, uh, a template theme that is anything but the simple theme. So I might want to change some of those things. So I go in and I say, okay, well, I'll go into the uh, format, and I'll, I'm sorry, into the slide, and I'm going to go to, to theme. And I'm going to put in a, a, a nice new modern theme where I'm going to uh, change it to the spotlight theme or something else like that. And based on her recommendation, I go ahead and do that. You can see there's problems that show up when I go ahead and do that. I change it to the spotlight theme, and now the black text on the on the on the dark gray background, as well as the how to give a great presentation, is not really readable against the callout function. So I might have to make some edits and changes to be able to make that happen. Maybe I decide on the Swiss theme, and at this point, my my commenting with uh, space uh, with Tracy is that we've resolved this the look part of it. I click on the resolve button here. And now the item is checked, and that issue now is resolved in the commenting section. So you can see that you can actually use this as a, a check, uh, checklist format to make sure that you're covering all the parts of making sure your presentations are great. That is that for every presentation, you can create yourself a really quick checklist. Look and design, content, outline planning, and then, of course, delivery you know, notes and things of that nature that you might want to have in there. And, and then invite your staff, invite your, your host and whomever to look at the presentation and to provide, provide commentary. And if each of those items are checked off, you can then go ahead and resolve them using that. You can always reopen the conversation and, and, and discuss those things. But you can go ahead and do that right here live. This is all live. It's sort of like chat. But as changes happen, you, everyone is seeing it all at the same time. This is a good time for me to, so you can see that Tracy is actually uh, has opened the document, so Tracy's actually in there, and I can live chat with Tracy. And so, uh, if, I know this is a small screen, but Tracy, since you opened the document, if you want to go ahead and write a message back to me. Uh, uh, I can't, can Ray. I couldn't keep it oh, open okay. and go to web webinar at the same time. So. Oh, okay, that's fine, that's fine. But, but either way, Tracy would be able to, if she weren't in the webinar tool, she would be able to go ahead and respond back to me live in, in that setting. So, 
Uh, that, that being the case, we have the ability to go ahead and collaborate. Uh, something that I would mention is that if you uh, are using Microsoft Office and using the PowerPoint tool, you can go ahead in and try out Google Cloud Connect. Google Cloud Connect is the tool that allows you to be able to import a uh, plugin into the Microsoft Office and use these collaboration tools, the ones that I'm showing you right now, right along with your uh, right along with your Microsoft Office users and yourself at the same time. So the other and final collaboration tool that I'll talk about is this insert comment tool. As you can see, I clicked on insert and then drop down to comment. And this actually allows you to apply a comment to a specific slide. So you can actually go into a slide and add a, a comment so that a collaborator like Tracy could come in and actually see what I'm talking about as it relates to this specific slide. But when I go ahead and launch the actual presentation, uh, you can see that that comment doesn't actually appear. So I can go through my presentation, I can give the really great presentation and show all of my parts and there's no comments that are shown or any of the comments that we had in the, in the discussion, but we have this historical or, or you know, log of our conversation that happens along the way. So I can go ahead and resolve comments, I can resolve the comments right within a specific slide as opposed to the entire presentation as well. So you have lots of different granular power over that particular presentation. When I was talking earlier about our sort of vocal delivery skills being so important, they are very important. And what's happening now, though, with the advance of technology, we now have Google+, Plus, and Google+, Plus has, a, has a specific feature called Hangouts. Google+, Plus Hangouts now allows you to have up to nine other people, yourself plus nine other people, in video and audio communication, live synchronous communication, meaning that you are all live, all on video, and seeing each other. So you can have up to nine other people in a video conference, and it's free, and you can go ahead and do that. And the wonderful thing is that you can actually pull in this presentation into that Google Plus Hangout. So you can show a presentation, you can show any Google Doc, any Google, any document within your Google Drive. You can show those Google formats, PDFs, and then the Google formats in your Google Plus Hangout, give the presentation live, you can see people's faces, they can see you, and so now facial expressions and, and uh, other types of uh, uh, props and things of that nature can be used in your presentation, even in a virtual format. So vocal deliveries are important, but even more so, we'll see on the horizon Google Plus Hangouts allowing for the idea of presentations to go ahead and do that. Finally, I said I would show you, of course, how to use the live tools, and I'm going to launch the live presentation. Uh, but first, let's talk about publishing. And publishing allows you to be able to do three levels of publishing. You can just publish this with, to anyone with a link, meaning that the link will allow people to go ahead and see the presentation live on the web without signing into Google. And that will not index it in, on Google, so people can't search for it using Google. But when you put it to public on the web, people can go ahead and click on it, uh, can search for it in Google Search and the other search engines, Yahoo, Bing, and ask an AOL.com and so on and so forth. All right, so those are the various levels of, uh, of, of that. Let's say I wanted to go ahead and start the presentation. If I start the presentation, you can see here that I have a little gear down here, and I can go ahead and open speaker notes. And that means that if I were to go ahead and want to type a note to myself in the presentation side, I can go ahead and read those presentations. You can see that it actually gives us a timer so that I know how long my presentation is going and, and things of that nature. I can skip between slides. And you can see that the title tag, or the title that I put in each of the slides, is actually that which creates the title names for me to jump through the slides. You can see here that we were supposed to have 10 slides. Note that I have 21. So uh, you know and the lack of. I was going to say, Ray, that does bring us to a question. Was, does this 10 slide rule refer to the main slides that are copied in their parts, or including that, that, all of the transitions? Yeah, that's correct. It's the, it's the 10 slides that create the main slides of the, of the, of the presentation. And again, in uh, Kai Kawasaki's world, he's talking about pitching to investors. So the 10, 20, 30 rule, I think, is a good base for you to work on. But your presentation needs to, of course, cover the content. And sometimes that will breed more or less slides. So the 10 slides should be the, the, uh, the, the slides that you need in order to be able to get your point effectively across. 
but you know, don't 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 skimp on the presentation just because you're trying to hold to ten slides. So that being the case, let's uh, I'm going to escape out of this uh, this view. How do I do that? Ray, we have a couple of other questions too. Can you have those slides oh, um, on a continuous continuous rotation? Is there is that on the toolbar? Uh, meaning that once you once you uh, play, it'll slideshow. Yeah. No, no. You okay. you have to manually move these move these slides in in the system. So okay. you have to manually manually move those slides. And uh, I'm sorry, you, you can. You can you can play in slideshow format. So here uh, you have the option to hit play. And now what will happen is without me doing anything, it will just start moving these slides from one to the next. As you can see, they move pretty much pretty quickly. And you can actually slow that down and speed that up within the settings. So, uh, so you can go ahead and, and pause and play. So I apologize. Yes, you can do that. Could, and, you, could you record audio to go with that? Does this you give you the ability? Record, you, you, you cannot record audio. What you can do is record audio in and, and post it to YouTube with just no imagery associated with it. And so you can actually post it within YouTube and then embed the YouTube video right within the presentation. And that will allow you to be able to go ahead in there. So if, if uh, you'll bear with me, you can see that uh, this particular presentation for this morning, I've gone ahead and embedded a YouTube video. This has uh, visual imagery associated with it. I'm going to actually just uh, mute my computer and then uh, uh, go ahead and click play, and people can sort of see the presentation. This is a wonderful presentation, uh, and you can go ahead and, and visit the, the Google link that's there on screen. But it's actually a 450 page page presentation using Google Docs presentation. Uh, and so, so that, that, that's the video basically embedded. But YouTube, uh, but audio itself, you can't just embed audio within it and it'll play naturally. No. OK. Can you show them how to, in, to insert a YouTube video? Yeah, sure. So if we go ahead and uh, exit out of this presentation, you can see here on this, uh, I'll just take it to this slide here. I can go ahead to insert. And as I went over the toolbar, you see you have the option of importing text, image, video. You just click on video. I'm going to go ahead and type into YouTube what I want to find. In this case, I'm, I wanted to insert the Google, Dem the Google Demo Slam video, the Epix Docs animation. I select it. And then it basically throws the video right into the into the into the page. I can of course expand it so that it takes over the entire page, and you can see that the the hairlines that are being created shows me where the document is on the page. So in this case, it's centered, and uh, in this case, I'm aligning that document with the margin, and then of course against the other side to the margin. I can also align it with the image, see the Virginia SPDC image right there. It's aligning with that, and so on and so forth. So I can go ahead and just import it that way. Great. We have one other question, which is, can you export this to Prezi? Uh, you can export the document to PowerPoint and then import from PowerPoint to Prezi. So yes, you can, you can uh, do it in those two stages. So you have to go ahead and export it to PowerPoint and then go into Prezi. Prezi allows for an import of a PowerPoint file, and then it will upload it into Prezi. So what's displaying on screen is just the Google Demo Slam. I just thought it was a fun visual while we do question and answer. <laughs> Are there so any, any other, other questions? Yeah, any other questions? Can you import Mac presentations from Keynote? Uh, at the at the present, no. You would have to you would have to find a way to use one of the Mac, the one of the Keynote presentation exporters. You know, one of the converters. And there are some online that will do that, that will take a keynote presentation and convert it to PowerPoint. But right now, Google Docs, Google Drive, will only import Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Office uh, file formats, PDF, and then most audio and video formats. Now, it won't play all of them native, natively, but it will at least go ahead and uh, you know, allow them to sit. Any file can actually sit within Google Docs. 
but the but the actual uh, using of the formats, the Microsoft Windows, uh, Microsoft Office formats are the ones that it currently looks at. Well, if there are no more questions, we've reached the um, the top of the hour. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for participating today. Today's webinar was recorded and will be posted on the Virginia SBDC website. Tomorrow you'll be receiving a follow-up email on this webinar and there's an evaluation link in that. Please help us to continue to improve our training by taking time to complete the evaluation. I also just posted that uh, link in the chat window, so if you uh, want to go ahead and fill out that evaluation now, we really appreciate it. We'll see you on October 11th for our next webinar on AdWords. Thanks everyone for participating today.